Good morning everybody. It's every day with Lisa. It's a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day. This is the day that the Lord has made and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. And today is Friday and I know everybody is grateful for Friday so that they can have their weekend to just relax and enjoy whatever they want to do. Maybe go down to go to the beach or go down the islands or whatever they like to do but um i know that everybody loves a friday for that and friday is a very a good day for a lot of people but what i wanted to talk today about was have you ever asked yourself who do you belong to have you ever asked yourself why am i here what is my purpose of being here was i just put on this earth I would just, but I, did I just appear here? Did my mother and father just give me birth and I was just appeared here? Or do I have a creator? Did I, does it really have a creator? Is there really a God? You know, and you have asked yourself so many questions. There are so many questions in your head. You keep asking, you know, and people always ask themselves these questions, you know, is there really a God? Are we just here for no reason at all? And a lot of people are on this earth and they have no purpose. They feel that there's no purpose in their life. They feel that they are here for no reason. But let me let you know one thing. That God, our creator, our maker, brought us onto this earth for a purpose. We are all here for a purpose. Not one creation was made here without a purpose. The butterflies have a purpose. The caterpillars that come into come into butterflies have a purpose. The bees have a purpose. The ants have a purpose. Every living element, every creature that was created by the creator, who is God himself, has a purpose and has a unique purpose, my people. Remember that. So you are not here for no reason at all. And there is a creator because we are all creations and all creations must have a creator okay the world was created and it must have a creator okay and a, a lot of scientists now are proving that there is a God there is a supreme being that created the world but let's go back down to the Word of God and let's go into listening more simple in a simple way he says that if you are going to trust someone, if you are going to trust someone in your life, who better to trust than your maker? If you are going to trust someone, who better to trust than your maker? Okay? Because he created you. He brought you here. He created you out of love. Okay? And he brought you here for a purpose. And sometimes we all feel an emptiness inside of us. We feel an emptiness inside of us because we don't bring God into our lives and when we don't invite God into our lives we feel empty and there's an emptiness in us a lot of people walk the world the earth the world feeling empty and alone because they don't have that relationship with their maker they don't have that relationship with God that personal relationship with God and when you have a personal relationship with God it makes all things better Okay, it makes you feel filled every day, even though you might go through problems and worries, you will always be filled because you have that personal relationship with your maker. You were born to have fellowship with your maker. Okay, so who else to trust but your maker? When it comes to planning, many Christians act like atheists. And I'm going to talk about Christians because I'm a Christian. I'm going to talk about Christians here who, who are called by the by name and are called children of god but they some of them don't act as children of god they act as atheists why because they don't place their full trust and dependence on god they don't wake up in the morning and say father i invite you to come into my life today holy spirit of god walk with me today talk with me today guide me today be with me today i pray for your protection oh lord over my life and my children's life invite god into your life okay if you are called by his name then you must act upon it and must believe with faith that anything you ask god for he will give to you if it is good for you 
okay so don't act like atheist but they don't really trust in him they think they can plan their life any way they want they want but the reality is everyone is created by God and he made each person for a purpose he has a specific a specific destiny for everyone so everyone was created for a purpose and everyone has a specific destiny so don't ever believe that you don't have a purpose in this life if you didn't have a purpose you will not be born you will not be created because then you will have been nothing and you are something if you were created and you are somebody because you were brought here and don't let anybody tell you that you can't do anything god has placed you here for a purpose mary the mother of jesus knew who she was she knew who she was our mother mary knew who she was right she depended fully on god when god came to her as a young girl and told her she was going to have a baby she said to god do it she said but how can i have a child he said i don't have a husband she said the holy spirit what did god say the holy spirit will come upon you and will, you will conceive and bear a son the son of god and you shall call him jesus okay and what did mary say your will be done let it be done to me according to thy will because she knew that she was brought here for god's purpose the mary could have said no i don't want to be i don't want to be in that i don't have nothing to do with that no but i don't have a husband what would what would what would my mother say and my father say if they see me pregnant and i don't have a husband and what would the people in, in, in the in community say if they see no mary didn't say that mary believed and trusted and had a lot of faith to actually accept that because it wasn't so easy as a story how they say it you know mary had to go through a lot of trials and persecutions because she was pregnant without marriage and even joseph had scorned her for a while because Joseph wanted to know where this baby coming from. But of course we know that Joseph, her husband, got a dream, fell into a dream, and the Holy Spirit, the angel Gabriel, came and told him that he, Mary, take Mary as your wife because Mary is going to have the Son of God. Okay? So it wasn't easy for Mary, but she believed and she trusted and had faith in her maker, that her maker brought her here for a purpose and this is her purpose to bring the son of god into the world you don't belong to any church remember that you belong to god okay a lot of people believe that they belong to a church and this church and that church know you belong to god and god will take you in different places to do his will and to do missions for him do not do go to the church because you believe that you belong to the church a lot of religious people with religious minds believe that they belong to the church. You do not belong to the church. You belong to God. You have to have a personal relationship with God. Many people go to church and do not have a personal relationship with God. They go for the rituals. They go to church every Sunday. They get up early in the morning. They go to church and they kneel down and pray and they do all the rituals, our Father, everything. But do they truly know who God is? Do they truly believe and trust and know who their father is? Okay. Do they have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Okay. Do they get up in the morning and praise him every day? Not only on a Sunday going to church. And they say, okay, this is my church. I belong to this church. You do not belong to a church. You belong to God. And God will call you into every different parts. Maybe you will go to many different churches. Okay, I'm not saying that you don't have a church to fellowship with. You will always have a church to fellowship with. And you always have to fellowship with a church in your community. And it's very good to go to church and fellowship. All right. God wants us to have fellowship with our member uh, of with our brothers and sisters of God. Okay? But you must remember that you are not you do not belong to the church. You belong to God and do not go to the church for the people. You go to the church to praise God. You go to the church to honor god you go to the church to pray you do not go to the church for the people you do not have to worry about the people if they talk about you you do not have to worry about the people if they don't like you you have to only go and focus on god your creator and jesus christ your savior 
and be nice to everyone always be nice to everyone and don't expect anyone to be perfect because they go to the church a lot of people criticize people in the church no one is perfect but jesus no one is perfect but god okay and we will not expect to have perfect people in the church okay so remember that you are going to the church because you have a personal relationship with god and you want to honor him on a sunday you want to honor him and you want to go and fellowship with, with your brothers and sisters in the church but you do not belong to the church the most fundamental question you can ask yourself is why am i here god makes everything with a purpose god makes everything with a purpose every plant has a purpose and if you are alive that means that god has a purpose for your life okay as i, I said i think i said that before for everything above and below visible and invisible everything got st started in him and finds its purpose in him who is god god has a purpose in making you okay you were planned for god's pleasure god made you to enjoy you to fellowship in love with you god wants to god wants to have fellowship with you that's one of the reasons why he created you one of the purposes of making you he wants you to be in fellowship with him okay he created you out of love god loved the human he loved the man when he created man it was one of his greatest delights to create man out of his image and likeness and then he created a woman but it was one of his greatest greatest delights to create man why because he created man for fellowship with him god created man to have conversations with him god created man to be able to talk with him okay that's why he created man out of his own image and likeness that is why he created us out of his own image, so that we will have fellowship with him so that we would love him and we would have a love relationship with god a lot of people put aside God and don't have that relationship with God and they are not happy. Why they don't feel happy? Why don't you feel joy? Because you don't have a relationship with your maker, your God who created you for that purpose. If you have a fellowship with God and you are in love with God and God is in love with you and you wake up every morning and know God loves you, you're going to feel a better person for it because you are completing your purpose there. You are completing what you not you need to do, have a fellowship with him. You were planned for God's pleasure. God made you to enjoy you, to fellowship and love with you. Okay. And Revelation 4.11 says, Revelation 4.11 says, You, God, created everything and it is for your pleasure that they exist and were created. You, God, created everything and it is for your pleasure that they exist and were created. So God created us all for his pleasure right that's how much he loves us do you enjoy your kids every day don't you don't you enjoy your kids okay if you enjoy your baby you have a newborn baby and he comes in the house i have a grandson i love my grandson i enjoy seeing my grandson because this is my first grandson and I, I i adore him and i love everything about him okay and i enjoy him because he's my grandson okay as the same way where god loves us and he enjoys us and enjoys seeing everything we do and everything when as we grow he sees what we do and he enjoys it god doesn't want when we are sad and we are hurting god hurts with us you know when we are grieving god grieves with us we are when we are in grief god grieves with us when we are sad god is sad with us okay when we love god loves with us god is in everything with us okay do you enjoy your kids of course we enjoy our kids the same way god enjoys you okay i think that the best way to describe a christian's life okay is love affair with god is that love affair with god and why i say christian is because we christians know and believe in god but we want all to come to know and believe in god we want all to know who god is because god created all and loves all and God wants even those who are not called Christians to come to know him and love him too. So not because you are not a Christian, God doesn't love you. Not because you don't know who Jesus is, God doesn't love you. God loves you no matter what. And he, his desire, his greatest desire is for you to come to know his son, Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the way to him. Okay, You might not understand that concept, but he is the key to heaven. Okay, He is our first brother. 
okay and he's the one that god created first so that all could become like jesus christ okay so this is god's greatest desire that all come to know and love jesus because god loves everyone in the world everyone okay in matthew 22 the greatest commandment says love the lord your god love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind that is one of the greatest that is one of the commandments that jesus gave jesus said, i have two commandments first commandment love your god lord with all your heart with all your soul and all your mind love your neighbor as yourself okay so this is what so this is what we were created to love our god and for our god to love us number two reason why god created us formed for god's family we were created and formed for a family god created us to be in a family god loves families and the devil knows that and that is why the devil will always try to destroy families okay devil will always try to destroy families okay just let me just turn down this volume here because it's going to come up again okay sorry about that so god will devil will always try to destroy families but god wants family okay and just as worship brings god pleasure because he wants us to love him Fellowship with other believers brings God's pleasure too. So he also, want, also wants us to have fellowship with other believers, with other people. So it is good for us to fellowship in, in, in God's house and others. And it is good for us to fellowship with our family. God wants families to stay together. Father, mother and children to stay together. Okay, and one of the greatest ways for families to stay together is to pray together. A family that prays together stays together a father that brings his children into knowing who god is his family will always be together okay it is a father's purpose in life to bring his children to know who god is to bring his family into prayer like uh, the olden days when the fathers would bring their family into prayer before they have dinner at the table they would pray and have a prayer and the father would lead that prayer a family that prays together stays together a mother's prayer is very powerful but the father is the one that must bring his family into prayer and reading the word of god it is extremely important that you bring your family into reading the word of god and praying with your family it makes your family stronger it helps your children mentally and it helps your children to become better people because when they see that you are a person of praise and a person that loves God, your children will wear that garment. You are, you have the, you wear the garment of praise, and your children also will wear that garment of praise because they follow what they see. Children see and follow everything that their parents do. It is very important that we set an example and show our children, especially fathers, lead your the wives depend on their, their their husbands for protection. They depend on their husbands to be in control of their home, not dominate. But to be in control of your home, do not dominate, but control your home and control your home in a wonderful and loving way. Okay. Um, so it says here, Ephesians 1, 5, this, this unchanging plan, Ephesians 1, 5, this unchanging plan, his unchanging plan has always been to adopt us into his own family. God wants us to be part of his family. Okay. You know why God made you? Because he wanted a family and that family is going to outlast your physical family because it extends into eternity. Into eternity. Okay? And you know, there's a lot of things to talk about on this topic. Okay? And I, I don't know if I could be able to cover everything today. I'm hoping I will try to do as much as I could. It says here number three. Create, we are created to be like Christ. God wants us to be like Christ. He wants us to be like Jesus. Okay? He wants us to act like Jesus. He wants us to be kind like Jesus. Okay? God created us to be like Christ. Okay? 
You were planned for God's pleasure, that's called worship, and you were formed for family, that's called fellowship, and God made you to transform you into the likeness of his son, Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus came here to set an example for us. Okay? The word of God says in Romans 8, 29, in the beginning, that those who came to him and all along, he knows who would should become like his son so that his son would be the first of many brothers okay that is in romans 8 29 this has been god's plan from the very beginning of time god is far more interested in what you are than what you do god wants to know that you are called his child remember we are we are not perfect and our our Actions will not help us. It's who we are and who we believe in. Okay? Shaped for service. We are shaped for... The number four says we are shaped for service. We are shaped for service. God made you to serve him. Okay? We made you to serve him and to serve others. We are called to serve. We are not called to be served, but we are called to serve others and to serve God. God created us for this reason. It is important that we know that. We are all want to be saved, but we are called to serve. And number five, made for a mission. Again, I said we were made for a mission. God wants us in a mission. God created us for a purpose. And all of us who are called by his name, all of us who are children, we have a gift from the Holy Spirit. We have gifts from the Holy Spirit and we use these gifts in the mission to bring many to God. Okay, so we are called for a purpose. Maybe we are called to help the poor. Maybe we are called to speak the word of God. Maybe we are called to intercessory. Maybe we are called, we are called for many different things. Find your purpose and do your mission for God. Walk the earth and do your mission for God. That is what you were here for. Psalms 100, okay? In Psalms 1, let's, let's see now what the Bible says. What does the Bible say about belonging to God? What does the Bible say about belonging to God? Okay, and let's look at the different verses in the Bible. Psalm 100. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his, we are his, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So we are his and we are the sheep of his pasture. Romans 14, 8 Romans 14, 8 says, For if we live, we live to the Lord. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. We belong to Him. Okay? And also, it states here in 1 John, which I love this one. 1 John 3, 1 to 24. So 1 John Chapter 3, 1 to 24 says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and we are the reason why the world do not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who, th who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness sin is lawlessness you know that he appeared to take away sins and in him there is no sin so once you believe in christ jesus once you receive him as your lord and savior there is no sin in you you have also you have all righteousness in christ jesus okay and you Gradually, by the power of the Holy Spirit, become a better person. It's not You're not going to be sinless. You're not going to be without sin. But because you believe and accept Jesus, there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. And you have all righteousness in Christ Jesus. So then you pray for God to gradually help you to repent and to turn away from all wrong. And gradually and surely, he will help you to form you and mold you into the person that he wants you to be. 1 Corinthians 3, 16, 17 says, Do you know that you are God's temple? You are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you. If everyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple 
is holy and you are that temple so you must keep your temple holy people you belong to God he is yours you are his your body is supposed to be the temple of God so you must keep it holy take care of the body of God take care of your health take care of what you place in your body take care of your mind take care of your soul okay God wants you to take care of your body not only physically but mentally and in your soul and your spirit okay because your body belongs to God you are the temple of God so I want you to remember that you have a purpose in life God created you for a purpose you were brought here and you have a mission for God okay and you belong to God so every morning when you wake up you talk to God and you ask him be with me today father I thank you for day show me what is your will for my life today be with me in my working day while I work as I do my job let me glorify you show that you belong to God because you do okay so I leave you with this word today people God loves you very much and I will always be here to say it's to say the word of God I pray every day to bring the word of God to you so have a wonderful day a blessed weekend everybody and I will see you tomorrow